so I said it. What does the future look like for this integrated world of digital and outdoor arts? And I, I, I chucked in the word integrated there because I felt today has been pretty integrated. Um, I don't know what other people have felt. I, I think we've all been talking very connected uh, language, um, which you know I found fascinating. But also, if you um, think back to the very few things that uh, Alison Clark could say at the start of the day, um, and there are still some of her colleagues here from um, Arts Council England, I think, as ever, this is a really important time to feed the Arts Council as they uh, go into the next 10 years with, with, with real actions. So I would like um, people who have got a statement of uh, action about what does the future look like for this integrated world of digital and outdoor arts to in one second put up their hand and then we will send the microphone around and you will share that thought uh, with everybody else in the room. I've got four incredible people up here on the stage who would love to be redundant and not to say something but they are the safety net if, 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 if the room doesn't do it. And they may be really upset, but I'd hopefully they won't be really upset if they don't say anything. Yeah. No? Nope. So put your arms up if you've got um, something to say. Um, what does the future look like for this integrated world of digital and outdoor arts? And what are the actions? At the back. Just generally more collaboration. People talking to each other and communicating, whether they come from a technical angle or whether they come from a creative angle or whatever part they come from, looking for wider networks of collaboration and sharing of ideas and etc. And how could one do that? Um, sort of set up more networks and more opportunities to um, come more. together to share. Okay, thank you. Any more? Yes, the, over here. Bill. Where, where? I can't here. see. There, I'll stand, crazy, the, I'll crazy. Stand in the light. Yeah, lovely. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, th I think just definitely picking up from what you said about um, making, making it accessible for everybody to kind of at least have a go to kind of see that it's not this thing that's in you know that only artists can do what we we were in the group earlier about talking about how art and creativity where everybody is not everybody's an artist but everybody can be creative or have the opportunity to be creative but also put in those art that that's um the arts those performances in a place where people are used to going so town centres, not just on festival day, but actually having sustained activity so people are able to engage with it as, throughout the year rather than just a couple of days each year. And just know, just you know, and enabling people to, okay, to say, well, you can have a go, you can try that, you can do this, just giving people those opportunities. Thank you. Any more? Here. Oh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on to the... Thank you. Just for today, I, I kind of realise that um, technology is has capacity for to be very human. I sort of feel that listening to, to all of the presentations that we've had, they've all focused in some way on something really human, whether that's connection, uh, and that might just be telling a story <laughs> over a phone, or it could be sharing and connecting between people, but also it's been really interesting to hear and observe how it reflects um, people's real lives, their feelings. You were talking about um, thrill, emotion, like fear, enjoyment, excitement. So it's, it's actually a real door to, for us to look at how human we really are if we focus in that direction. Beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? So, do Or if anybody else here is quicker, quicker than Jude. No, 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 no she's I can there. Go quick, I can go quick. Sorry. Well, I, I, I um, just that you were first. I would say that they're integrated already, and I think that's a, that's that's a kind of falsehood. Um, and uh, so I think it's not like it's us and them or this and that. 
I think it is about the notion of creativity and it's a notion about having ideas uh, for people, with people. It's about having good ideas and enabling that. Um, I don't think there's anything good about dividing things out into sections. I think we live in an integrated, multidisciplinary lives where we go from the phone to the screen to the street. Um, and we're very uh, virtuosic and fluid in that. And I think it's really like not fearing the technology, not thinking that's the enemy, not thinking that the outdoor art is sort of a lot of people just mushing about together on the on the opposite spectrum, which which you could make that view of. So I think it's valuing across, and 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 it's not a segregation kind of thing. I just think that's so redundant and old and. Um, how forward, um, it's about changing your mindset. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably just reinforcing Great. here um, exactly the same message, but um, what I've just kind of quickly scribbled down. So maybe, with an it. maybe with an action, uh, 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 an, you know, a call to action. Something, um, that, something that the Arts Council will take away. That well, will... yeah, no, I've got that. All oh, right, got sorry. I've sorry. got it. Um, <laughs> um, like somebody referenced earlier um, about, you know, sort of having a, a, a network for, for digital culture or for outdoor digital. We don't want that. We want to be part of your party. We don't want to be over there. <laughs> like, we don't see ourselves as being any different. My uh, journey into the arts sector started with Greenwich and Docklands Festivals back in 2002, I think. And I don't really feel like I'm doing anything different I'm just using a different paintbrush you know it's like it shouldn't be seen as separate um, and I think lots of people don't see it as separate um, and it's you know it's up to us to talk about it in in that way um, but uh, I think in terms of that call to action I'd like to hear less of um, we have to do digital and I think that comes about for lots of different reasons. And some of that is about pressure from um, expectations around what we should be doing as arts organizations. And if we approach it as we've got to do digital, we're going to end up with the wrong um, result. It has to be about tech for art's sake, not about just for tech's sake. You know, you, it, has to, it has to reinforce um, and you know, absolutely work for that experience that you're trying to create. Um, and I suppose if there's one other thing that I'd like to see more of, um, we haven't fixed this, so I don't know how um, it will materialize, but hopefully in the next kind of um, three to five years, I'd like to see more open data around um, code that we are creating. So I know we have it. I know the stuff that we've created, um, but I don't know how to enable it you know, that it can be shared with all of you in a platform. And I know I'm not, that we're not the only ones creating. And I think that's a real opportunity for the future um, from cultural organizations. And maybe this somehow needs to be a, a shared ownership of that. So in commons, basically. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so the IP, it's actually accepting that the IP on some things needs to go. Yeah, so, yeah, so allowing more people to create, and that's yeah. you know that's what we all want is we want to be able to access those tools, and we don't know how to. All mm. the questions I've had are how do, how do I get to this person? How do I find a way mm. of doing this? And we have lots of answers, yeah. but not you know. There, there are answers. Um, an artist I work with, I'm, I'm just saying this because she does this, is is Kathy Matthews, who's um, a son sonic artist, and mm. one of her projects is the Bicophonic Research Institute is sonic cycling and if you go to the bri website they publish everything mm -hmm. it's it's open source all of their technology as they've done it they they publish it um and, mm -hmm. and it, it is for sharing so that's really more interesting. of that more more of, more of yeah, that and more that's signposting for very interesting but who, then yeah. people need to be paid properly to get to that point where they're able Absolutely, to share yeah. and they don't then need yeah. to get their money back by actually, you know, they can they can sign away their IP if if they've been paid to actually get to that point, I feel. Yeah. yeah. Brendan. Thanks. Um, so the first point I, I'm going to make is, I think, following on from what uh, you were saying about, uh, about uh, people. And I think um, coming back to humans evolve very slowly. What's fundamentally important to us as as a society, as as creatures, as animals, even uh, chimpanzees have been reported to shake rotting trees so they could ride them as they're falling. The the our thirst for thrill, just as a very sort of basic emotional experience, has been with us for millennia. 
And, and that's still the case. It will be the same case in 50 years' time. Technology moves at a great pace. So unless you concentrate on the, on the people first and our need to act as social animals, to experience uh, as, as animals, to have human emotional experiences, uh, then you're lost. And I think uh, ever since we've been making water wheels, ever since uh, agricultural machines came on the scene, electricity, cinema, uh, people have always found a way to ride new technology left to their own devices. <clears throat> So sometimes I sometimes think, don't meddle, don't fiddle with it, because I, I've seen in various universities there's a um, an anxiety to um, in large institutions to not only get on the bandwagon, to, but to but to try and put the cart before the horse. And in fact, actually, what people need to do is be to be allowed to play. Um, but we're not all experts, so this comes on to my... Uh, we don't need to be experts, I mean, this, this keeps coming up, but how do we facilitate play? How can we as artists facilitate play, play and people's engagement with technology? And there are two courses that I know, and I think it's through education. The two courses that I've come across that have really inspired me over the years, the first one was Sonic Arts at Middlesex University, where a lot of people, I've come across a lot of coders um, who know C programming so well, it is like the clay for their sculpting. They are so proficient, it is a creative medium. And then computer-related design, which appeared at the Royal College of Art during the early 90s as well, uh, started to teach. Uh, there were architects, there were artists, there were engineers who came in, all who had a, an interest in digital media. And they trained these people, and they all went back to their own disciplines again. And, and then they started engaging with their various audiences. So I think uh, it starts for me, um, as an education level to um, educate us, uh, a community of people who can then go out and facilitate and enable the audience to play, experience technology in their own way. Thank you. Um, I think what you guys say all resonate very well. Um, I think there's this um, uh, curator, Jose Luis, uh, he said this thing recently, which I find it very relevant. He was saying how art is ever so relevant in this current situation now because we are creating micro-society and experimenting with people on how the new form of society could be in the future. And especially with technology now, we are really at the onset of how this could be much more embedded in outdoor work. And I do think as artists, as curators and organizers, we need to be really careful with the use of technology because a lot of times we kind of think that technology is going to do everything, so we outsource it to people who might know better. But if you look at the, the, the source of where all this code is, sometimes they end up with just plain middle class white male coding, the programming. And it's not inclusive enough. And there's an issue with that. There's, there's a very massive issue with the fact that sometimes we do take part in the mistake the mystifying of technology, and that when audience sees it, they see this utopic future where technology is gonna take over our world, but it's not happening. And I do think that we need to be responsible in the work that we do to make sure that when people are experiencing this, they know what is behind the scene and that they know that this is a technology, it's not a barrier for you, you are able to create this as much as we can. And I think that's very important, especially doing future outdoor work that's gonna be much more technologically led. Thank you so much. And we've come to the end. Um, at the end of these things, as you know, this has been funded. Thank you to, um, well, particularly to the Arts Council who fund both 101 and Without Walls. Um, and we have a duty to them to help them report back so that they can continue to get that money. And that's why it's important for you to fill in the evaluation form. I am really interested uh, to see the analysis of the second question, what gender do you identify as? For me, I feel it's been very interesting to be in a room about, partly about tech and technology where my estimation, of course, it might be different when people answer that question, is that at least two thirds of the people in the room have, 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 would, would put female to that. And I think that's very interesting. So let's see what actually people identify as when they fill that. And you can just either do it now, it's done, or you can get it sent as an email and then not do it. So just do it now. Um, um, has anyone got name badge? Yeah, name badge. We'd really like you to leave those because you'll take them home and throw them in the bin. So leave them and then they will be used again at the next uh, one of these things and that will save 
the planet totally, I think. Um, so these two organizations, uh, Extracts that Manage Without Walls, um, Maggie Clark, obviously, who, who, who runs it, but I'd uh, like to um, big thanks to Elena Cavallero, who's their digital manager, and Katrina there, who's been doing the live streaming to all the mums at home who've been watching everyone be a star today, so, so thank you. Uh, 101 um, is an outdoor arts creation space. It is not uh, a conference space, but I think they have done an amazing job, uh, particularly considering they were leading uh, the, the Newbury Lantern Procession with hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of participants through the streets of Newbury on Saturday night, who also then turn around this place to make it a, a great space, I think, for, for, for today. So Simon, Danielle, uh, Tara, Hannah, William, Martin, Guy, Bill, Nisha, Andy, Susanna, Lou, Angel, and Adele, I think are the team from 101 who've helped do that. So could we all um, put our hands together and thank all of those people? And I would just like to say a particular thanks to all of our, our speakers, um, who I think, as I said earlier, have, have fed and nourished us hugely. And with that feeding, I think um, there is uh, much that will, will grow from, from, from that energy. And I love doing it. So thank you very much for being great people that have made the job really easy. And thank you um, for um, all, of the, um, all of the work that you've done here. And there's one other person who I, who I have to thank. Who is it, Simon? Richie. Richie. Sorry, Richie, who's meant that I'd be, Richie, who's meant that I, people have been able to hear me droning on. Maybe, maybe you would rather he'd have switched it off at some points, but anyway, there you go. So the, thank you, Richie. <laughs> who, as a tech, has been really inspired by today. He does a guerrilla projection, and I think he's going to go out and do more guerrilla projection after today. So good on you. And remember, there's an election. Remember to vote. Uh, remember that uh, to get everyone to vote on Thursday, that's vital. And thank you very much. And taxes are coming, and people are leaving, and all of that. So <laughs> bye. <laughs>